This episode is brought to you in part by DotsonParts.com. That's DotsonParts with a Z, dot com. If you're looking for any Dotson-related parts, please check and compare prices on DotsonParts.com first. This is not going according to plan at all. So we're on like day three, take 10 of trying to make the inside part of our battery panel. And I think I've got it figured out as much as I'm gonna get it figured out. So we've had to make one little bitty about inch and a quarter strip and then we got this little two inch strip right here. I didn't wanna break it up into those pieces but making this whole panel as one piece with the compound curved proved to be near impossible with the tools that I have at my disposal. I was hoping to make this panel all as one piece. That wasn't happening. And then I hope to make this panel and this panel as two pieces. That wasn't happening. So we've got one, two, three, four pieces, and it's going together a lot better than any other attempt thus far. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get this part wrapped up, hopefully, and on to something else. So just if you're wondering, this panel right here is butt welded up to it. This panel is butt welded to this one. Then we have these overlapped sections. So the original panel comes down right through here. And what we're going to end up doing is cutting these at a bevel. So 45 degrees to each other, uh, back up to the top. And then these panels are going to just plop right in and be flush. It's going to close the gap up really well. And then this panel right here, we're just going to probably tweak down just a little bit to get it to meet this panel. We're going to bring this panel up and this panel down. And the same thing, we're going to try to get those 45 degree angles cut. And that way it'll be a nice, flush, smooth transition once we get it all ground out. So let's get busy doing that and hopefully this works. That way I avoid any more frustration. All right, so just a little explanation of what I was doing there. I've got these two panels. I butt welded this, I butt welded that. And then right over here, we have these long sections that were kind of overlapping. And all I did was, and, and here as well. So I formed this a little bit without trying to create too many hammer marks in there and then smooth that out. And I got a little bit of curve down, a little bit of curve up here. These two panels were meeting but overlapping. And all you do is take your angle grinder and at a 45 degree angle, come in here and cut on the edge of this panel from underneath. What that does is it allows a bevel to be created for those two panels to basically sit down on top of each other with very minimal gap. That way they're flush, almost like a butt weld, but with a tighter gap. And on curved panels, that's really helpful. Same thing here, we have this little compound curve that comes up this way. As these panels are curving this way, we have to come in here and cut very shallow plunge cuts. That way this lays directly on top of that. A little bit of hammer and dolly work. These two pieces fit up very nice and tight. So it's time to tack all this in together and get it all welded up. And now all we have to do is grind all this stuff out. And for those of you who don't want to watch me do all the grinding, it's done. 
For those of you who do want to watch all the grinding, here we go. All right, guys, we're down to our last patch right there. And by now, I'm sure you guys are tired of watching me cut and grind and weld little bitty patches. So we've got enough of that content for this video, and we're just going to fix this one just like that. All right, so now we have to make our last panel, and we're over here at the slip roll. That inner panel that goes from the frame rail up to our existing panel that we made and got all that welded in is two different radiuses. So in the back on the firewall, it's a nice tight radius, and then it kind of opens up the further towards the front that that panel goes. So we're over here at the slip roll. We have had to set up a taper. Um, this thing has a back roller so it's just two two rollers that pinch the metal and then this back roller determines the radius of that bend as it's feeding through so what we've had to do here is we've had to set the left side uh, fairly tight for the radius that we want on the firewall side and then on the right side we've opened it up quite a bit so that back roller is slanted okay and now what that's going to do is as you feed it through the one side closest to the tight end is going to get that nice tight radius and the one over to this end is going to get a very open, uh, less tight radius. So it's going to be a much bigger circumference on that side than this side. But what we want to do is measure the width of our panel. And you can see I've made a little mark right here on the roller. And then we're just going to send some test pieces through and make some final adjustments and make sure that those test pieces, test strips, match up to the two radiuses that we're trying to make before we actually send our panel through so let's give those a check and then we're gonna go ahead and make our last panel and get that welded in Now you can see the radiuses on the inside look pretty good. The radius on the outside actually cut another inch or two out of the actual car. Uh, so this isn't going to be exact, but we've got this back bend that we need to take care of too, this compound bend. And that's what makes this part, uh, the battery tray replacement, so difficult is all the bends and then compound bends. We're going to see if we can't back roll this on the open side and just get a nice from this corner out to about right in here, nice back bend and uh, make that look good. Thank 
Well, sometimes you have to know when to admit defeat, and after the third attempt going on the fourth of trying to make a single panel to go in the rest of the void, uh, frustration has more than set in, and we're moving on to a new method, which is going to require us to bake two additional panels just to help get that compound curve towards the top. So, let me show you what I got going on to try to help bend this flange. So any radius curve that you try to then put a 90 degree flange on without a shrinker stretcher, you're going to run into issues with whatever radius you set. As you pull over that flange at 90 degrees, it's going to want to open that radius back up because it doesn't want to actually leave the metal in its original state. It wants to go back to what it was, which is a flat piece. So attaching it to a curved piece or the same radius piece that you're attempting to bend to will help pull that metal over and stretch it out without a shrinker stretcher. So I've just got an old lathe chuck. If there's any machinists in the comments below, don't freak out. That thing is worn out. It's no good. So yeah, I use it to beat on. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get that going and I'll show you what the final piece looks like in a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna bring this portion of this project to a close. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I did doing it. If you haven't done so already, please click that like button if you enjoyed the content. If you wanna know what we're doing next on this thing, you already know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, that way you get notified just as soon as we post another video. We appreciate you as always, and until next time, thank you so very much for watching this video.